So let's take a look at a, a different example that's not so <laughs> completely similar like the types of problems we were looking at before. So in this case, I'm going to have some large ball here at rest. It has a uh, mass, say, of, um, of uh, 10 kilograms. So this is some mass. It has some 10 kilograms. It's initially at rest. And so I'm going to take a very small mass, m. We'll say m is 0 0.1 kilograms. And it's going to uh, collide with the large mass. It's going it at a speed um, initially, well, the incoming speed of 50 meters per second. Now it's going to collide with the mass and then bounce off. And after it bounces off, it's it's after this collision, it has a speed of 40 meters per second in the other direction. And I want to analyze this in terms of impulse and momentum and find out uh, what happens to this large mass and what about the forces that, that uh, existed between the masses when they collided. Okay, so when these two masses interacted, they interacted by some contact force, which for the most part is unknown. But we can say that that contact force over the time interval of that collision led to a change in momentum in my small mass. So what was that, what was that change in momentum? Well, the change in momentum then was the, the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Now remember, even though I'm in one dimension, these are vectors, and so I have to be careful as to establish a coordinate system. I'm going to call the, uh, go off to the right, the positive x-axis. And so my final momentum was negative uh, four, 40 times 0.1 mass times the velocity, and the final, the velocity was in the negative x direction, minus the initial momentum, which was had a velocity of 50 times the mass, 0.1, and it was in the positive direction, so it was a positive 50 minus a positive 50 times 0.1. So that's negative 4 minus 5, and so my change in momentum was negative 9 kilograms meters per second. So this was the uh, total um, momentum change, and so this was the total impulse that was um, delivered to my small mass. And so the question is, what about the impulse that was delivered to the large mass? Now, so this impulse was equal to the time integral uh, of the net force dt, where this net force is the force on my small mass by the large mass, right? Because it was the mo it was the force on the small mass because of changing the momentum of the small mass. Okay, but by Newton's third law, then, there was also a force on the large mass by the small mass. And we know that was equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, so I can find that impulse, so the, the uh, the impulse on the large mass. So that's equal to the time integral from initial to t final of negative f net dt. So it's the same, whatever that was, I don't know what it was, but whatever it was, I know that there was an impulse on the large mass equal to the same sort of integral over a force of the same magnitude opposite in direction. 
And so I can pull the minus sign out, and so that's minus t sub i, t sub f, final initial time, integral, and this was just the same delta p we had over here. And so the large mass has the same change in momentum, well, sorry, not the, the opposite, change in momentum, same magnitude, opposite in direction, change in momentum that the small mass had because there was an equal and opposite uh, force acting over the same time, they were in contact for the same time, uh, that, was, um, that was acting on the large mass. Okay, so let's look at that calculation. So that means for the large mass, large mass, it had a change in momentum of negative delta P, which is 9 kilograms meters per second. So if we said that that was, it was initially at rest, that's P final minus P initial, P initial is 0 if it was at rest, and so now the momentum, the final momentum of the large mass was 9 kilograms meters per second, and it's positive, which means it's going pos in the positive x direction, and if I can calculate the speed, which is the final mass, final momentum over the mass, then if it was 10, 0 0.9 meters per second. And so the small mass delivered an impulse to the large mass that gave it a final speed of 0.9 meters per second. Okay, I, I want, the, the final uh, important part of this is, is I want to look at this problem graphically here for a minute. So if I want to plot now the force as a function of time, so you've probably seen things collide before and in a collision sometimes the amount of time they're in con contact uh, can hardly be seen the contact time is so short so let's as an approximation say and this is that the entire time of the collision was from 0 to 10 milliseconds some short period of time we can barely see so I don't know what this function was but I'm going to say, you know, it, it started uh, at zero when it first started, when they first started colliding. It came up to some maximum halfway through and then came back down to zero. And I'm going to say it increases linearly. There, there's no particularly good reason to say that this is a good model of this, but just the roughest thing I can think of to, to say, what does this force look like over this, this time period? Okay, so I'm going to approximate this force as sort of linear up to some some maximum force. Now it might have some other shape, but these there's probably not straight lines, but it's got to have this sort of characteristics. It starts at zero, goes to some maximum, and comes down to zero when they when they are no longer in contact with each other. So it has that general feature, and we'll just m simplify it at this point, saying that it's linear up to a maximum and then down. Right. So the impulse, which is the integral of F, uh, the force, dt, then, of course, that's just the area under this curve. So that area, then, is it's a triangle, one-half the base, which is 10 milliseconds, so that's 0 0.01 seconds, times the height, which is f max. And so we know that that is equal to the total change in momentum, which was 9 kilograms meters per second. So what does that tell us about the maximum force that um, the, the two objects exerted on each other? Well, we can solve that, and f max is equal to, well, 18 over 0 0.01, so it's a factor of 100, 1800 newtons. And if that seems, that may seem large, but that's not necessarily too surprising. And that's a feature that will come in again when analyzing these types of interactions. 
if we're looking at a lot of times when we have things collide, these two objects exert forces on each other, and the integrals of those forces lead to changes in momentum, and the changes in momentum may be fairly moderate. This went to, you know, one, went from zero to one meter per second. My object went from 50 to 40 meters per second. However, because the time of that interaction was so short, the sort of maximum uh, force or even the average force that the two exerted on each other over that time was really very substantial. And so let's do that calculation where we look at the average force. The average force. So the way we do the average force is say we know what the impulse is and the average force is going to be fo the force such that if it were constant over the same time period it would give you the same impulse. So the, the average force is defined such that the constant, it's a constant number, times a time interval gives you the same impulse. So in this case, the average force is the impulse which is 9 over the time which is 0 0.01, 900 newtons. So we can see in this example that even though these two objects colliding um, gave you know moderate reasonable changes in their momentum, the average and net forces between them were really quite strong. And that's going to be an important part of our analysis in these types of collisions.